I'll bet that you've built a power app over SharePoint data. Well, today, Sultan Al Sharfi shares why his customers have moved key apps to Dataverse, and he shows how easy moving that data can be. Today on PowerCat Live. Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Thomas from the PowerCat team, and today we are here with Sultan Al Sharfi, a customer success manager. Hey, Sultan. Hi, Phil. How are you doing? Good. I'm glad that you're here to talk about getting uh, getting from SharePoint onto Dataverse. But first, talk a little bit about what your role is. So currently, I work in a role called Customer Success Manager, a really cool title. It's all about customer success. And mainly, I focus on Power Platform solutions and cross Microsoft Cloud solutions, so solutions involving Azure, M365, D365, and Power Platform. And you and I got in touch because you've been helping people migrate off of SharePoint onto Dataverse. Why is this so important? SharePoint is the most commonly used data source uh, whenever you're building Power Apps and Power Automate. But right. in the past couple of years, I have seen many of my clients repeatedly run into common pitfalls when using SharePoint as a data source. And sometimes, especially when they have some important or mission critical applications. And, and those pitfalls uh, usually uh, would expose uh, the, our clients to uh, to, to security security problems uh, like uh, cause data leakage or some capacity problems and which yeah which 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 leads to losing some some uh, productivity hours uh, of of their staff using those apps. I'm not saying you know we should never use SharePoint uh, lists as a, as a data source. On the contrary, uh, you can use it. I'm not saying it's not secure. It is secure. Uh, SharePoint has enterprise security. It does encryption on on in, uh, in on REST and in transit. However, you need to use it uh, in the right way. And uh, when you use tech that is not fit for purpose, you end up exposing yourself to such vulnerabilities. So, so what data sources do you see people migrating off of SharePoint onto? Uh, usually, I see people migrating to, and again, depends on the scenario, migrating mm -hmm. to uh, Dataverse, for example, Azure SQL. And again, you don't want to do that for all your applications. Like when you build Power Platform solutions, yeah. there are some personal productivity solutions, which is okay, you know, for, for using SharePoint. However, if you have mission critical or important applications, you want to make sure that you are not falling into any of, of the common pitfalls when using SharePoint as a data source. And if you do, then uh, the solution might be migrating to those more powerful, fit for purpose data sources. Um, so the first pitfall usual users go into what I call security by up security. For example, yeah. I have this client last year, they were trying to build a performance management app where it, you know, it, it stores very sensitive data. It's about the employees' performance, very uh, private notes between them and their managers. Uh, so, you know, they build the, the app. If you go into the app, you only see your data. Manager only sees, you know, their employees. But uh, uh, unfortunately, on the data source side, they did not do the required, you know, security configurations. So if people hit directly that yeah, SharePoint list, they would be able to that. see each other exa exactly. Yeah, and um, and you know you could you could work around that sometimes by applying what we call list item level permissions in SharePoint, mm -hmm. using Power Automate flows to do that. However, you will very quickly run into some limitations in terms of the number of items that can exist in a list which has a list item level permission. So the recommended number currently we try to stay under 5K. After that, you start running into performance degradations. Yeah, 5,000 is not that, not that many either. No, not that, not that many not at all. So the second uh, common pitfall is when people try to use SharePoint lists as more like a relational database. And uh, for example, they try to build you know this solution uh, using again SharePoint as a relation yeah, database. It's not supposed common. to be used in that way. Yeah. Exactly. And um, and again, you start running into capacity limitations very very quickly. I'm not saying SharePoint cannot store lots of data. It can. You know, a list can continue up can contain up to 30 million items. That's fine. However, once you start exceeding certain numbers. The, the type of crowd operations that you can do through an app or through a flow become very limited. Also, the, the, num the number of delegable functions that you have when using SharePoint is quite limited compared to other, yeah. to other yeah. data sources. We, we commonly, commonly see apps, too, where they're using SharePoint as a relational data store, and they have to gather all that data yeah. in the app, and it slows down the app, too. They're doing way too much work. There is much, much powerful alternatives uh, for doing that. So what are those alternatives? What do you recommend to your customers? 
so again, depending on the scenario, but a very common one is dataverse. Yep. Uh, so for example, if you need that, that relational model, if you need to support large number of items, if you need to scale, yep. if you need security baked in within the, 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 data, the data repo itself, then, then Dataverse is, is, is your answer there. If you have uh, column-level column, column level permissions, so that's not available yeah. in SharePoint. You have native support for many-to-many -many relationships. You have more uh, functions that are delegable at the data source. And, you know, I, I saw this video, maybe you posted a few weeks ago, uh, talking about the planet scale of Dataverse. You know, Dataverse yeah. has on the back of it, you know, there's a lot going on behind Dataverse. There is a lot going on, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> SQL Elastic Pools, Cosmos DB, you know, and... and Replication, and constant components. backup, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So so how, how hard is it to migrate from a SharePoint-based app to get your data into Dataverse? So it's, it's you know, it depends on the scenario. However, most, most of the scenarios are quite straightforward. You could use uh, what we call the Power Platform Data Flows to help you move the data from, from SharePoint to Dataverse. And also you could use, uh, you, then you'd have to do some, some configuration on the app on switching the data source. But, but it's usually a straightforward uh, process. And can you show us that process of moving the data? This, this app is using uh, a travel request list uh, in SharePoint as its main data source. Uh, so when people submit uh, uh, the requests in the Canvas app, it gets uh, stored in this list. As you can see, there are many column types in this, in this list. However, um, there, there are two that I would like to highlight here. One is the department uh, column, um, which is basically a lookup. Uh, column pointing to the departments list and the cost centers column, which is a multi-value uh, uh, lookup column pointing to the cost uh, centers list. So to move the data from uh, SharePoint to Dataverse, you would want to go ahead and create a Power Platform data flow. I went ahead and created a data flow already. As you can see, it's involving uh, three lists that are part of our scenario here, cost center departments and travel requests. You can see I've done some special transformations for special column types, which is detailed in other videos how I have done all of this. As a next step, I created a, a lookup uh, column uh, pointing uh, from uh, uh, the, uh, the travel requests table in Dataverse to the departments table in, in Dataverse. And then I use this Power Automate flow to set the value in for this lookup column based on the value retrieved from, from SharePoint using the data flow. I have also created a many-to-many -many relationship between the travel requests table and the, and the cost centers table. Uh, in Dataverse, and then I used uh, this flow to relate uh, uh, with the relate row action to uh, to create relationships between uh, uh, the the travel requests and 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 the cost centers. As you can see, it's visible here for this uh, record. And uh, yeah, that's that's about it. So that demo did look pretty easy, you know, pretty quick to get your data out of SharePoint into Dataverse. Where do people go if they want to try this on their own? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I've written a couple of LinkedIn articles that details the steps. Also, I, we, we've published uh, a couple of videos on the PowerCat architecture series that goes into step-by-step -step on how you could build such data flow, but also uh, address some of the complex type columns in SharePoint, or how, how you move those to, to Dataverse, like handling one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships. And I will link all that in the description so people can go and check out that, that next steps. Sultan, thanks so much for all of the experience that you put into these articles and for sharing them with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate everyone's time. Mm -hmm.